Hello everyone, I am here to recap, I guess what you would call a game. Um, now before I do this, I would like to say, good job to Buffalo, you won, uh, by a hefty sum. Now, like, I'm not gonna make any excuse, you guys deserve to win, we sucked. Now, numbers and stuff. Josh Allen was 15 of 22, 196 yards, 8.9 average yards per throw, one touch, no pick. He was sacked three times, lost 32 yards on said sacks. 111.2 quarterback rating. Now, Chris Ivory carried the ball 20 times for 56 yards, a 2.8 average with a 7-yard run as his long. Josh Allen, 10 of, for 39, 3.9 yard average, two touchdowns. And Marcus Murphy carried the ball eight times for 33 yards, 4.1 average. And that equals 38 carries for 128 yards, a 3.4 yards per average. Which I actually think, even though the number here, 128, is a lot higher than what we've seen in the past, the yards per carry is on par to where it's like, I think this is similar to what we've done to other teams in the past where, it ends up being a lot because you do it a lot more than everyone else, but it's not necessarily getting a lot of bigger chunks. And Chris Ivory was also their leading receiver, though. He got three three balls and four targets, 70 yards, and obviously had that 55-yarder. Andre Holmes, three receptions on four targets for 29 yards. Benjamin, three for five, 29 yards. And then you had uh, Kroom on that uh, kind of like they faked a screen and they kind of did a wheel out there and Hughes bit the screen touchdown after one of the turnovers happened and Charles Clay only two two catches for on three targets for 18 yards Zay Jones caught one ball for 17 yards and that's really it as far as notable people go and they were 4 of 13 on third down, 31%, no turnovers, 2 of 3 in the red zone, 67%. And they held on to the ball for 35 minutes and 45 seconds, which that's a lot of time. That was a problem. The other side of this is Minnesota and their, their stuff going out here. Kirk Cousins was 40 of 55, 296 yards, a 5.4 average, one touch, one pick, an 83.6 quarterback rating. In total, we only carried the ball six times. Two of those broken plays by Kirk Cousins, so he had to run out. Now, we only gained 14 yards on these six runs for a 2.3 yard per carry average. And our leading rusher was Mike Boone for two carries and 11 yards. So, a little uh, skeptical, to say the least. Um... Uh, Receiving, receiving ball here. Thielen had 14 catches on 19 targets, 105 yards, 7.5 average. Rudolph had was 5 of 6 for 48 in the lone touchdown. C.J. Ham, uh, when they kind of were basically just allowing us to eat the middle of the field and just a waste clock for them. You saw him make a few plays, and he had he ended up with 47 yards receiving. Treadwell caught all four of his targets. There's a there's a bright side note, I guess. He didn't drop any ball from last week. That's a very good improvement. And Latavius Murray, 5 for 7, and there was for 30 yards, and obviously that interception was, he was the target, but that was kind of a questionable decision. And I don't know. Diggs, 4 for 10. Four catches on 10 targets for 17 yards for 4.3 yards on an average. Aldrick Robinson caught his lone pass for 9 yards and Conklin got in for 7 yards. Now they were 5 of 14 on third down, so 36%. 3 turnovers, 3 turnovers, which ended up being very, 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 very costly. They were 1 for 1 in the red zone and they were able to hold the ball for 24 minutes and 15 seconds. Now, this game... <laughs> should scare us Viking fans a lot, I think. And because nothing was done well, this was 
a team that we should have beaten. And last time we had this expectations going, we were like, oh, we should be a Super Bowl contender. We should be able to do this. We should go in, have a victory. You go ahead and you have two bad losses in 2016 to a very beatable Bears team and a very beatable Eagle team at the time, at the time in 2016. And we all know how that went. They never kind of rebounded. They ended up going from 5-0 and to 8-8. Eight and eight. And they can't really do that this year. And not just not, I'm not saying hit the panic button right now. It's still week three. But you have to see how they bounce back in order to do this. Now, that's where the problem lies is they play on Thursday. On the road against the Rams one of the better teams in the league. So this is kind of like the biggest litmus test that we could possibly have right now. And after a, a game like this, going out playing a very good team on the road, can you compete? Because we obviously could not compete with Buffalo. Now, it's concerning. It's very concerning. And at the same time, though, I feel like they got what they deserved along this offensive line. We couldn't block for anything. Like like I said, I know we only carried the ball six times, but we only averaged 2.3 yards. Do you think it's probably not that much of a coincidence that uh, the game Dalvin Cook isn't here? We can't get the run game going at all. Not that we really tried anyway because we got down by 17 so early because they just drove down, they kicked it in there, and then... You know, the two strip sacks put us down to a 17 nothing hole. But at the same time, like, you see those things happen sometimes to teams that are considered the Super Bowl contender types. Like, the kind that you expect to be there in January, possibly February. These things will tend to happen at times, but they claw their way back, they find their way back, and they ultimately win the game. We, we didn't see that. This had a very NFC Championship game feel to it. And... That's very concerning. So, and I imagine when it comes to that offensive line, the whole Brett Jones, Pat Elf line coming in for like, what was it, like 22 snaps, probably didn't help the best as you have the line calls from the center going in throughout. So that probably didn't help, not knowing who the center was going to be at times. So, and you can't really judge Elf line based on the fact that he played 20 like around 20 snaps, like 20 to 25 snaps. And that's, you can't, I, I feel like that was a bad idea to rotate the the centers even a little bit. But I do think they kind of got what they deserved along the offensive line because I think a lot of us were saying, no, we need offensive line the first round because they went out and they got a quarterback for $84 million and Kirk Cousins, you got one that doesn't, he doesn't have the escapability that Case Keenum had. And I don't know if they expected him to all of a sudden just take a miracle pill and he would get that. But that's not what he is. He needs a pocket. You need to protect him oh, at least decently. And I kind of know what they said there. They're like, no, we'll be fine. We'll tough it out. We Nick Easton will take another step forward. And then all of a sudden, like... Like, you know, you see Nick Easton there, Joe Berger retired. I expect another step from Rashad Hill to come up. There was a lot of, like, just potential things of, like, they kind of got cute with this line. And now you kind of see where that gets you. And we've seen this in the past where they kind of done that with the line. Now, albeit Riley Reef was kind of the problem today, <laughs> he's one of the better ones usually on this line. So... It's a little, that's, but we also know he's not like an end-all, be-all, great all-pro tackle. He's average at best. These things will happen. So, even though he played pretty well the first two games, this game was horrible for him. And just nothing, no, no one played well today, I don't think. But, I don't know, it's just, when you combine some of the struggles from last week, from some of the missed tackles to... Special teams, which was another problem today. We seem to have a penalty almost every time we came out for the return. And 
that would put us way back. Then we can't do that. Like you're at the 25. Just take, just let the touchback go. Let the touchback go. You'll be at the 25. Keep it from there. And I think part of the reason why we couldn't really get much going in the past game, because I think these numbers for cousins are better than what we saw. And I think part of the reason was we didn't have a run game. So his best asset, his play action passing, non-existent. And that really took away the play action deep shots to digs per se, which is why you see his yardage total at 17. He's our deep play guy. So based on the last two games, this almost looks like an eight or nine win team, but just based on the last two. And it's concerning because you see guys running wide open. There's missed tackles. You have mental errors here and there, which really shouldn't happen on a team that's kind of, for the most part, been together for the majority of Zimmer's tenure in Minnesota. And was this a product of just, you know, coming off of a weird tie game, kind of a high emotion kind of game? Maybe there's some fatigue in there. And maybe some of the players overlook the Buffalo Bills saying like, oh, no, they looked horrible. And then you kind of look at, oh, but we need to turn around, get that short week going to the Rams and almost start focusing on the Rams too early. Was it one of those deals? I don't know. But what I do know is they need to come back and actually they need to at least put up a fight. Because I think right now, after watching that game, you kind of say to yourself, Splitting between the Rams and the Eagles is a very tough ask of this team. And it's not looking too great right now. But I would like to know what you guys think of this game down in the comments below. That should be an interesting section today. And uh, until next time, I bid you adieu.